Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back. Today we are continuing on with our finishing process on this beautiful Ashboro Top Telecaster style guitar kit from Solo Music Gear. We're, yeah, working on the finishing. So we're gonna be doing some sealing today and the other paint work. Let's give you guys a closer look at this before we go too much further. You can see this top is just beautiful. It's got some amazing grain pattern in it and it just looks gorgeous. Um, the back, pretty straightforward, so we're gonna be doing probably an opaque finish on that, but this is really the focus of the kit. We've got the burl veneer here, and then of course our binding. So to start off with, we're just gonna do a little bit of cleanup work on the binding. That's just gonna involve taking a brand new razor blade and scraping off a little bit of the residue that's on there from the metallic that I applied that I pushed into the grain. So you probably can't even see it in the camera, but there's a little bit of gold metallic right inside the grain on this guy. And then we've got our, our stain underneath and then our oil finish on top. This has all been done using Mohawk products so far because as you guys know, they're basically my favorite. So we used um, their Blendall stain powder to do the base stain work just with water, pretty straightforward. Then we mix that into some lacquer to get a bit of a top coat and darken things up slightly. Very thin, that was with their classic instrument lacquer and again, the blend all stain. Then we came in with some bronzing powder, the gold stuff, and pushed it into the grain. And really what we ended up with was bronze all over the top. The stuff turns gold when it's mixed with the proper solvents. So we did bronze and then we actually ended up taking it off with some modified tongue oil, which darkened things a bit more, gave us this nice brown hue. And as we used that on the um, bronzing powder, it turned gold. So. That was really cool, but of course we had to take it all off the top to get our grain back. And now there's just some gold hue left in the grain pattern. Like I said, we're gonna clean up the binding a bit and then we're gonna be moving on to our easy vinyl sealer. We're gonna get this guy all sealed up and then we'll move on to the painting process. The top is basically done. It just needs to be clear coated. So it's gonna be sealed with the vinyl sealer and then we'll go over it with the stringed instrument lacquer and fix it, finish it all up. The back, I think I'm going to do in a metallic. So I'll have to decide exactly how I want to go through that process uh, and whether I want to base it in something first, but you'll see that as we go. So yeah, let's get to work. Let me just begin by saying I do not enjoy scraping bindings. It's very time consuming, but so is taping them and it is a pain. Uh, and so this is what I generally do and it's what I've seen uh, the factories do for Gibson and stuff like that. So what you need to be careful of here, well, among other things, is that you don't hold the razor blade completely flat or you will scratch the surface. I also take the corners off of my razor blade with some sandpaper before I do this. You can use some masking tape to protect the surface. Uh, or you can go ahead and buy a binding scraping tool from like Stumac or something like that if you happen to have a lot of excess money. In general, there's really no magic to this part of the process. You just need to be very careful. Take it slow, particularly when you're starting out. I uh, don't think that you can watch a video of someone in the Gibson factory doing this and then do it at the same speed as them because it probably won't go well. Again, I'm holding this at a very slight angle and that allows me to control how much I'm taking off and I find that much easier than trying to just use the tip of the razor blade because then it slips and causes gouges. Now the side here is much easier to scrape when the back and sides of the guitar are raw like they are on this one right now. Um, but the same concept applies, particularly when there's paint on there. Put a little bit of an angle there and just be very careful. You can do it uh, horizontally or vertically in terms of how you hold the guitar. It really doesn't matter much. And don't be too afraid about uh, applying a little bit of pressure if you need to get some stubborn paint off of there. There's usually enough plastic for it not to be much of an issue. I'm going over this now with some 800 grit paper just to make sure everything is nice and smooth, particularly on this top part, and to scuff up the oil a little bit because I've got a modified tongue oil kind of finish on there right now. I need to get that ready for the sealer. We've definitely got to use sealer on this thing because of the depth of the pores in that ash burl. So I use sealer on essentially every build uh, when I'm starting from raw wood, but particularly with a more porous wood like that ash burl, we need something there to help fill in a little bit of that. So I'm gonna go ahead and apply three coats of this vinyl sealer from Mohawk. This is, as it stands, my favorite sealer. I, it 
depending on the circumstances, sometimes I'll use a catalyzed primer or a catalyzed poly uh, as a sealer, and that's a very fast way of doing it. Builds up thick, is a lot more plasticky, but this vinyl sealer dries very quickly, builds up thick enough, generally speaking, and uh, I, I just really like it. It's very easy to work with. You definitely need a mask when you're applying it, but it comes in spray cans as well, and they are really easy to work with as well. Very high quality cans, so I'm quite fond of that. As usual, if you want any of that, uh, you can go ahead and check out the Amazon link in the description. All of the Mohawk and Bell and stuff that I use generally is available through there. Now, in case I haven't mentioned it, while I go ahead and nauseate you with this on-camera GoPro view, uh, if you want one of these guitar kits, feel free to check out the Solo Music Gear link in the description. That'll take you to the Solo Guitars website. That is my link, so if you purchase something through there, it helps me out, whether it's one of these kits or anything else on the website. Uh, but in any event, if you want one of these kits, they've got a great selection there. This one in particular, like I said, is the Ash Burl top the ash burl veneer and i've been hugely happy with this kit so far uh, if you haven't seen the previous videos in this series well not only did we do that finish on the top but we routed this thing for a humbucker we made our own belly carve by hand and we demoed the kit in its stock form at the beginning so it's been fun so far and we're coming up on the end here should only be a couple videos left uh, but for now we're doing this sealing work. So I use three coats of this. It takes about, uh, well, it doesn't take very long to dry. Honestly, it takes about 45 minutes to dry to the point where you can sand it. But what I like to do is three coats, 10 to 15 minutes apart, like I generally do with these solvent paints so that they bond together without having to sand. And then I give it three days to really dry up so that I don't have to worry about any solvents trying to escape from the sealer through any subsequent layers for example, through the nitrocellulose lacquer that I'm going to be putting on here next. You can see in terms of my painting technique, I'm using the typical 50% overlap on my stroke, so I move down half the width of the spray pattern every stroke. Uh, this is None of this footage is sped up, so you can see how fast I'm doing that as well. Go figure, I wait till the end of the painting process to do that. Uh, feel free to go back and check out the pace at which I was painting. Anyway, now I'm going over this sealer with, I believe, 800 grit paper uh, to scuff it up. This is three days later at least. And the main purpose of this is to flatten it, to make sure that it's a nice, smooth, flat surface for when I go to put on my lacquer. Now, it does also help with adhesion a little bit because I'm moving from the vinyl sealer to the lacquer. Between coats of nitrocellulose, even if you let them dry, you do not have to sand because it bonds together chemically, it melts into itself. But when you're moving from the vinyl sealer to the lacquer, well, frankly, I'm not 100% sure whether or not that occurs. So I always give it a nice sanding to make sure I can also get some mechanical adhesion and to make sure that everything's nice and smooth. Another very important step here is cleaning it so that you don't get any debris, you don't end up with like, I don't know, dust, mud, nonsense. Uh, so go ahead and clean it with some wax and grease remover. What I'm using here is some naphtha, also from Mohawk, of course, uh, which is a wax and grease remover. It's a natural degreaser. Well, it's not natural, but anyway, it's a degreaser, and uh, it's not harmful to the vinyl sealer or to lacquer itself, actually, once it's dry. So that's what I've been using. Now I've got some of Mohawk's classic instrument lacquer here, and I'm using some of the bronzing powder, powder that I used earlier. I have, in fact, made a decision on the back of the guitar here, and this is what I'm using. So that powder you can see, this is really cool. It goes in there bronze like that. It's got that deep, bronzy look um, like it is here when dry. But when mixed in with the oil before and now when mixed in with the lacquer, you'll see that it turns gold. So as I mix it, it has this nice rich golden color and that's what I want. I want something brighter uh, and nice and gold to match that little hint of this that's stuck in the green on the ash burl on the front. I'm going to spray this exclusively on the back of the guitar. And what I end up with here after several coats of this is a very cool, in my opinion, effect. So I'm doing just the back. I'm leaving the sides natural. And I've got this mixed light enough that it's actually going on transparent but it still has that golden hue. And as I build up coats, and again, this is not sped up either. This is how fast I'm doing it. You can see me right now, I'm just spraying some air at it to make sure that it dries nice and quick, but nitro lacquer like this dries so fast that you can go ahead and, and recoat for something like this very quickly. 
So I'm going in and uh, and doing just that. I'm about to do my next coat, and I'm overlapping again 50% on that uh, stroke. And this is how fast I'm actually moving. I'm putting those coats on nice and light so I can do a bunch uh, in a row and build up the effect very quickly. Uh, but very gradually because I'm doing it in so many coats. And now you can start to see that it's getting to be opaque and in some lighting, in some angles, it just looks mostly gold. And in some, you get a nice clear view of exactly what the grain looks like because you can see right through it. So I'm showing you, I think, all of the coats of this that I did. Uh, this should be the last one right here, I believe. The video will correct me if I'm wrong. I should have watched it before I did this. Anyway, um, once that effect's on there, the next step is to go ahead with the clear coat. And here we are, me doing the clear coat. You can tell because I'm spraying the edges, which I didn't do with the other one. So I've got a bigger gun here. Uh, I was using a Devilbus, a, a smaller gun for the last one. This is my Warwick FLG4, I think. So this is my favorite gun from Warwick. It's my, my lacquer gun that I use for everything. Uh, if you are interested in one of these, I have a Warwick link specifically in the description. Uh, I recommend this gun in particular uh, for this kind of application, and you can use the 10% discount code that I have there if you want. Um, but yeah, I use this for all of my nitrocellulose work. You can see the spray pattern that it puts out. It's nice, consistent, the right amount of material in my opinion, and again, not sped up, so you can see exactly how fast I was doing that. Now here we have a different GoPro view. Uh, this one is not from the gun, so hopefully... A little more steady and not as nauseating, but uh, also not quite as close. If you guys uh, if you guys like these viewpoints, let me know, please. And if you hate them, let me know. And if you have a preference between this one and the on gun view, uh, let me know that as well. I, I want to I want this stuff to be shown in a way that people enjoy and, and that makes it easy to tell what's going on. So give me your thoughts on that in the description below. Uh, in terms of Speed, again, not sped up. It, it actually, like, I'm doing this fast enough that it almost looks sped up, but it's not. This is much quicker than I would spray, like, a polyurethane or something like that. Anyway, so I do these about three coats in a day, uh, and then I give it a little extra time to dry, like a day if I need to, and come back if I need more coats. Well, this is looking uh, pretty good. I really like this gold on the back. So I've got, you can see it's kind of transparent, but also gold, which is cool. Nice metallic gold. So depending on what angle you look at it from, it's either an opaque gold look or you can just see the green. Anyway, this guy's got uh, that burl veneer on the top. So ash burl has some very deep pores, as you can tell, and you can still see some of them in here. Let me see if I can get you closer here. And sorry for the noise, by the way, we're manufacturing stuff over there so it's it's kind of loud um you know, let's see so the coat looks nice but you can still see the texture of the grain there which isn't ideal and means we're going to need to do more coats we're going to call it a day for this video in the next one i'm going to show you how you can take one of these leveling beams from solo music gear which are awesome great for fret work very glad i have one but i'm going to show you how to use it to do flat sanding on this properly it's going to make things a lot easier and then we're going to go ahead and add a few more coats, let it dry, and then it'll be time to polish. So we'll probably try to get through most of that in the next video. And then after that, it's just going to be final assembly. And we'll be good to go. As always, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please feel free to give it a thumbs up. I would appreciate it. Remember to subscribe so you can see the rest of this series and the other ones that I'm working on. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching. Have a good one.